If the power goes out or the electric company shuts down the grid, one question, what are you going to do? What are your backup plans? You're the leader. What contingencies do you already have in place? Now, nothing beats a high-capacity generator in a power outage situation. I chose the gasoline-run Honda EU2000. They typically come in red, and I'm sure you've seen them around, but for a few bucks more, you can get them in forest camouflage, useful in a bug-out situation in the woods. This puts out 2,000 watts of power and about 1,600 continuous watts. Their next model, the EU3000, puts out 3,000 watts and can run a whole house. Only problem, it's much more expensive and very heavy. This one here, on the other hand, weighs only around 37 pounds and will run around $1,200. Even my wife can carry it. Again, mobility is everything. you got to keep your gear mobile. Remember the interconnecting relationships. Well, if you need a bug out to a mountain house, it'd be nice to bring a light and efficient energy source in order to function off the grid. And talking about bugging out to a mountain house, you'll also need the gasoline to get your bug out vehicle there. If you need to get out of the AO quickly, you'll need a ready gasoline source to do it. Murphy's Law, when disaster strikes, your vehicle will most likely be low on gas. That sucks, huh? Well, face it and do something about it now. In a crisis situation, there's typically long lines at the gas station and a whole lot of scared and frantic folks. Not good. You don't need that shit, and you have better ways to spend the little precious time you have to get out. These are jerry cans, very tough to find. They typically only sell to the military, but I can point you to a good source. They each have a five gallon capacity and have convenient carrying handles. They come with their own spout. I keep one spout in each vehicle and also a few around the house in specific places. Remember, when storing fuel, you must be extra cautious. The fumes can ignite an unwanted fire like that. So post no smoking signs in the vicinity. Also, you need to make sure it's outdoors, away from direct sunlight, and properly ventilated. You'll also want to add a fuel preservative. Get a good brand like Stable and add the suggested amount while you're filling up at the gas station, not after. This batch here will last about a year. After a year, use it in your vehicles and refill the jerry cans again and store another batch. Simple. Lastly, secure your emergency fuel source with a damn good lock and clobber the friggin' bastard who even thinks of stealing it. Enough said about that. Having a Franklin stove is a good alternative when warming the house or even cooking. Keep a good supply of wood and environ logs as a backup. Here's a picture of ours. I got it free from Craigslist. I then cut a hole through the roof and installed it myself. And I also laid the brick hearth below myself as well. It will come in very handy as an alternative fuel or heating source. Think outside the stove. Speaking of stoves, here are some alternative cooking fuel sources. We have here a lot of extra canisters of jet boil fuel for the jet boil system, which can boil a liter of water in 90 seconds flat. All that means is that you don't have to use or waste that much fuel for each meal. I also have some military fuel gel as a backup. It burns very nicely. These have now replaced the old trioxane fuel bars that the military used to use. And finally we have here a few wet fire cubes as a backup. Begin now to strategize and create your own backup fuel systems. And if you have children, it's doubly important. You may not be able to get it all at once. We didn't. This took some time. But whatever you do, do it now.